in creating this course and helping people understand YouTube, even if they're in jail or in prison, I was really thinking about what would have been helpful to me. I've shown you my channel before and I'm going to take the liberty of showing you again because I think that's an important uh, a starting point. Um, this is the channel right here. Um, I'm going to go to prisonprofessors.com and just this is the easier way for me to get to it. This is my website, but if I click on this YouTube icon right here, it goes right to the channel. And when I'm looking at this channel, I don't want to hear this trailer. That's called a trailer, by the way. I think we've heard Ro talk about it, but you can film a specific trailer for your video where you're going to try and address your audience. And this is the channel that I started. If you look, if we go back to my videos section right here, and I click on the sort by, and I go to the oldest, um, I may have shown you this before, but I want to show it to you again. You can see that I fir filmed this first video seven years ago. And if you can hear it, I, I don't know if you could hear it, but you're going to see that I'm actually in the halfway house. So this I filmed on September the 1st, 2012. Um, that's like, I'm still, I just got released from prison to the halfway house in, on August the 13th, 2012. So this is like three weeks later, and this is the first video that I created, okay? Um, you can see in here also, seven years ago, hello, Michael, I've been following your progress for about four years since I first read your book, Inside. Your story is very uplifting. So, so you see, the work that I was doing in jail or prison already, you can see there, was starting to help me build a support network. And if you look through here, you're going to see a lot of videos here where I'm in, um, that 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 have a lot of views or some of them have some of them are on other channels some of them are on my channel but the truth is i didn't understand anything about youtube when i was starting this and that's what i'm trying to do i my my goal is not to say you're going to get out of here and immediately be able to become a youtube star although that's possible i'm certainly not a youtube star I'm more of a pragmatist. I use this as a tool to build businesses and to build credibility and to get sales. And that is a very practical way of using this. Other people make this their vocation. And as I showed in the previous video uh, course, the previous lesson, I profile people that have built this into mega successful businesses where they're generating millions of views every single month. And as a result of that million views every single month, they're very likely earning perhaps as much as $100,000 or maybe even more every single month because their, their engagement is so high that people are buying commercials on there, advertisements on there. I, I want you to understand that in this video that, that Ro is going to be talking about, she's going to begin talking about monetizing with ads. But I don't have any ads on mine. I qualify for ads because I've got 2,400 subscribers. Um, I, I have, but I, I've got, I, I'm not interested in making money from my ads. I don't think I have enough. I, don't, I know I don't have enough traffic. So even if I were subscribing for ads, I'd be getting like 20 or 30 or $50 a month, which is insignificant. It, it costs me like 100 times that to just to maintain all of my work. So monetizing it doesn't make sense, but what, and, and there's another reason it doesn't make sense for me. That may not be the case for you. It's not the case for Roe. Um, another reason that it wouldn't make sense is that every time I'm advertising, people could, every time I'm playing a video, if I'm monetizing it, my competitors could be running ads right there on my screen. And I don't want to do that. I made this video, I re still remember, in when I was in San Francisco on my way to the halfway house and I'm at the, I, I'm right there in the Tenderloin district just learning how to use my iPhone. But I've never monetized my YouTube channel. I'm not going to say that will never happen, but right now that is not the goal. The goal for me is to use this as a tool to generate other business opportunities and to support my other business interests. So um, you have to think about how you define success. And that goes back to the, the curriculum of our straight A guide. You've got to define success for you. For me, success is that people can, can, can find me on YouTube. It's my hope that I can earn their trust by showing them who I, who I am and what I stand for and be open and transparent. And I try to reach my audience. It's my hope that, that people that might have an interest in my work will look at this channel 
and they may have a an, an interest in reaching out and doing business with me or doing business with some of my um, other companies that I that I have. So this is a specific channel that is for um, helping people that are facing court proceedings, sentencing proceedings, prison or institutions that want to create content to teach and inspire people in prison. And in this video, what I want you to be paying attention to Ro when she's talking about is the importance of making sure that the colors, the fonts, the imagery that you have here is similar to what you're using in other areas of your, of your internet presence. And so I have tried to do that. That's my partner, Justin. He's more actually even more public than I am because I, I don't really interact with consumers. I'm more of a content creator and I've got other business responsibilities. So I don't have, like this takes 20% of my time. I've got other businesses that take a lot of my time as well. Um, but I don't know what you're going to be looking for, but it's the same concept that we spoke about in the uh, straight A guide is that you've got to define success. You've got to set your clear goals that align with how you define success. And then you go forward with the right attitude, with the right aspiration, with the right action plan. And, and, and you just work through all of those principles so that you can achieve what you want to achieve. Right now, I'm creating this YouTube channel channel or this YouTube course as part of a case study. By hiring Row, I've learned a lot and I'm going to be incorporating a lot of this into the development of my YouTube channel because I, I think it's important for me to do. And at the end of this video, um, I'm going to start acting on some of the things that she recommended that I do and I will show you how I will do that. But for now, why don't I just be quiet and let you listen to Row who is teaching us how to, how to use this channel more effectively. So let's talk really quick about the YouTube partner program, which is when you can start putting ads on your video and get a little bit of monetization back for your efforts for what you're doing with your YouTube videos. To qualify to become YouTube partnered, you have to have at least 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time. But here's a catch that I also had to learn the hard way. Watch time does not mean that it is 4,000 straight hours of people just watching you. It's actually calculated based off of an algorithm that looks at how long people are watching your videos, how many are watching to the end. If the viewer that's watching one of your videos clicks through to another one or lets it run through to the next one, and then other unknown factors that make up this algorithm. So what I did when I was first trying to get monetized because YouTube ads are the only way that I'm monetized right now. And sadly, you have to be in this for the heart before you're in it for the money because you make very, very, very minimal in ads when you're a smaller channel. I'm still considered a smaller channel. So I used to make playlists and I would have the members of my nonprofit who were so sweet and offered to do this for me. They would make playlists and just let my videos play all day long, all night long. And eventually I got there. It took a few years, but we got there and you will too. Once you hit 4,000 hours and 1,000 subscribers, then you'll be eligible to place ads on your videos. It's a slow grind. You'll get there. Don't stress. And that said, I should probably add this and I'll tell you guys again later, but once you are partnered and you're able to place ads on your videos, you have the ability to place the ads where you want them and however many you want in, on your video if your video is 10 minutes or longer. If it's shorter than 10 minutes, you could still put ads on that video, but YouTube is the only one that can put ads on that video as many as they want and wherever they want them to be. So it's just something that I think about is I know that if I have, let's say a three or four minute video, because I don't want to just add fluff and filler because people are going to click off and that's going to hurt you eventually, then I know I won't be able to place the ads. That's okay. Or if I have something that's say nine and a half minutes, then I will add probably 30 seconds of talking just so I have the ability to place more ads on my videos and place them where I want them. Okay. This is really cool. You can make a link that you share on your social media or with your family and your friends that will automatically pop up something that says subscribe to this channel. So it's not just youtube.com and then people have to find the subscribe button. So the way that you do that is you have to have at least 100 subscribers in order to qualify for this subscription link. 
to create your own link with, it's literally a pop-up box that prompts viewers to subscribe to your channel. You have to use this following link, this long link that I have down here, and then replace channel name with the name of your channel. So it's youtube.com slash C slash, then you're adding your channel name, then a question mark, S U B underscore confirmation equals one. one so the next one. is branding your channel. You want to make sure that you're consistent across your channel and all social media. So you want to make sure you use the same colors, the same font, the same style and type of imagery across the board. We kind of already covered that before. So now we're going into research and what videos you'll make. Now this part's going to get long. Michael, are you okay on time? I'm okay if you're okay. I'm perfect. Yep. I'm perfectly fine. Cause I really want, want you to do this so you can kind of play with this before our next meeting. Right. Yeah. I love homework. So, <laughs> yay. I have homework for you at the end. Um, so a lot of people get to this point, they have this channel and they're so excited to go and they have this kind of concept, but they're like, I don't know what to make videos about, or I have this idea for videos, but then nobody's watching them. So what you need to do is research before you start filming your videos and you'll know exactly what people are looking for and how to make the videos you want to make and make the people click those videos. So it's really tempting to skip this step and just wing the whole thing. Don't I've been there. I've had videos where I've heard crickets. It's really important to grow on YouTube if to follow these steps to grow on YouTube. So you need to research before you record and you need to make videos that people will number one, find, and number two, just as importantly, want to watch. You can have the best content on YouTube, but you have to get viewers in order to click it in order and watch it in order to click, to click it, to watch it. There is an audience that wants to watch your content. You just have to show up when they search. YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world. It's owned by the largest, which is Google. So you have to treat YouTube like a search engine. YouTube is also an algorithm. So you just have to learn how to play with the algorithm and then you'll succeed. So the ways that your videos get seen are either ranking on the top results page. So when people go into YouTube and they search prison professors or, you know, my, what would my first day in prison be like? And Michael's videos pop up. You could also show up by showing up in suggested videos. So showing up beside your own videos or beside your competitors' videos. So you, everybody sees this. When you go to YouTube and you click on somebody's video, on the right-hand side, there are other videos that they say you might also like this. That's where you want to start getting shown to on your competitors' channels or people in your same area, in your same niche, so that people start clicking on you too. The last way is direct searches. So Michael, you tell one of your friends, hey, this girl, Ro, she has a channel, she helps prison wives. Her name is Ro Clausen. So then they just search for Ro Clausen when you tell them about it or when people hear my channel. So you want to choose keywords with a high search volume and low competition, which sounds crazy confusing, but we'll get into that in our next lesson. For now, you just need to know that consistency is extremely important. Just like we talked about earlier, when will you publish every week, what days, what time, and you can look to your analytics to see exactly when people are watching your videos, they're watching your videos. And we'll get into that next week as well. You want to aim for quality over quantity. Try not to just throw up a video every day just because it's an upload day. You want it to be a video people want to watch. Now, Michael, your videos are excellent. You can do videos every single day because you have the microphone and you have the great background and you have that great presence, but you've built that, I'm sure, over time. So for people that are just starting out, that might not be feasible for them right now. When I first started out, I was on a mission to post a video every single day for a year. Well, my first videos are so awful to watch. They make me cringe. So just make sure that you're putting quality into your videos and not just publishing because it's the time to publish. Audio quality is actually more important than your video quality. 
So if you have a dark background, not that it's ideal, but if you have a dark background or something maybe is a little fuzzy or the background isn't the neatest, people will stay on that longer than if there's feedback in the audio, if they can't hear you, or if there's too much background noise. I had a camera that was an old camcorder that somebody had donated to my nonprofit. And that's what I was originally using for my videos. And something went corrupt with the microphone and there was a clicking sound in the microphone. And I couldn't edit it out. When I tried to edit the background noise, it kind of turned into this dull hum. And I had so many people hopping off my videos in the comments saying to me, what are those Jumanji drums in the background? So just make sure that you have the best audio that you possibly can. And that doesn't mean you have to go out and buy the state of the art microphone. It just means try to make sure that there's nothing playing in the background. Try to make sure that there's no babies crying or screaming, which I know is hard for the mommies out there and the daddies out there, but things like that. Make sure that it's not a windy day. I had a video where I had started three or four different times because somebody was outside with a lawnmower and it was just way too much background noise. So just be careful of that. Okay, so you want to look at your top traffic sources in your analytics. How are people finding you? What words are they searching for and landing on your videos? So that is in analytics. So you're going back to your YouTube studio. You're going to analytics. You're going to reach. You're going to YouTube search. And you're going to traffic source. So let's go to mine. We'll do this together. We're going back to YouTube Studio. Analytics. Reach. Right here. YouTube search. Am I frozen again? No, you're, I'm watching you. Hmm, I don't know why it's not, let's see. Let's try it this way. Okay, there it worked that time. Okay, so these are the words that people are searching and they're landing on my videos. And you could see people are, number one, they're always going to search your name, especially when you're new because it's word of mouth advertising and people are saying who's Roe Clausen because people are saying go look me up. Then I have Prison Wife, Prison Wives. And you could see over here that I got 695 views off of my name. Oh, I forgot to tell you this part. So go over here on the right and you want to change this to lifetime. That's why those numbers were a little off to me. Okay, so it's still gonna be your name, but you could see I have 8,675 views on my name and then prison wife, prison wife, conjugal visits in prison. These are clues on videos that you wanna make because these are what people are already searching for and they're finding your videos. So you might as well make other videos on this. And let's dig more into that. So an example from my channel is Coral Links. And that is one of my top searched terms, as you just saw. <clears throat> so I have made videos about Coral Links in the past, but I can very easily make an updated video about Coral Links because my last one was in 2018. Mm -hmm. So you also want to jump on trends in your industry. So when the Coral Links app was first released, it was in 2012. I made a video about it. Now I can make a video about how inmates can use core links and send emails as a text that's directly sent that's sends directly to somebody's phone. So it's just an updated trend, but I'm still using that keyword that people are searching and they're finding my channel. And you'll see, this is why a lot of big YouTubers make videos that say things like how to do X. 2020 version because this way they're making that video they're using that theme of something that worked really well for them in the past and it's a way to update it so how to start a youtube channel in 2020 i don't know if you've seen it but i've seen it everywhere recently because with coronavirus a lot of people are stuck at home so youtubers who are in the area of youtube teaching about youtube are making that kind of a video or for me something that's works for my channel would be how to write a prisoner using core links in 2020 because two of my keywords that are top searched and people are landing on my videos are core links and also write a prisoner. So this is kind of fun and you can just kind of work it into video ideas for yourself.
So another one that's searched for me very frequently is conjugal visits. And I don't have anything to do with them. They're actually not even called that anymore, but people are really interested in them. So I interviewed a woman who gets them in California. And that video got so many watches right when I posted it. I think it had over a thousand views. Get creative with this. So you could turn it into a series. What I'm doing is I inter I'm interviewing women in different states who get those family visits or conjugal visits. And then I can say conjugal visits in California, conjugal visits in New York, et cetera. These are my top videos on my channel. Now this first one, Prison Wife Shares Ideas for Cards for Inmates, it was one of the very first videos that I ever made in 2011. So I believe that's why it has as many views as it does. It's just been around a lot longer than a lot of my other videos. But you could see, that's a top one, you could see that. And then the next one is a book review I did around the exact same time. And then the rest of them is when I brought my channel back. So what I did was I started in 2011, I made videos for about nine months, and then something personal happened and I had to pull it all down, put everything in private mode, and I brought it all back in, I think it was 2018. So the rest of them are from 2018 on. So you could see um, exactly how much money does an inmate really need. That's huge for me, it gets the most views. And then right alongside of it is my first prison visit because people who, are going for the first time are searching for those terms. So you can start to create themes so people will stay on your channel and you'll get that watch time. My top performing video recently, like we said, is how much money does an inmate really need? So I knew money and fi finances were big with my viewers. So the following month, I created a video chronicling every penny I spent throughout an entire visit weekend. I have to travel, I have to get a hotel room, I have to get food, all of that stuff. Well, that video blew up because it was within the theme of what my viewers were interested in watching. So what you wanna do is sort your videos on your page by most popular, and then make more videos like those. So for example, my number one most popular was that first one I did in 2011 about better cards for inmates. But here's the thing. Since 2011, the mail rules have changed dramatically. I was telling people to kiss the, <laughs> the letters with lipstick. I was telling people to spray perfume. I was telling people to send certain things. You can't do that anymore, at least in federal prison. So the content in there is outdated. So what I could do now is remake that video, remake it better because I have all these years of experience with a more current spin. And I know for a fact that video is gonna do well because this video is already doing well. Another way that you can get ideas for videos is to simply ask your audience what they want to see. A lot of times we just forget to ask the people that we have in front of us. So a way that you could do that is there's a poll feature in the community tabs in YouTube. You can also just send an email to your friends or family if you have an email list built up. You can use a third party survey site like SurveyMonkey or you can use social media. I prefer to use social media. I think it works the best because people are used to interacting that way on social media. So they don't think it's out of the ordinary or they don't think they're going to be sold to or pitched to or anything like that. That's where I have the best of luck, but I also have a huge social media presence. So whatever is the most comfortable for you and wherever you are in your business and in your channel is perfect. So this part is this is so fun for me. You can get really nerdy and geek out on this. It's called the ABCs of YouTube. So what you want to do is go into that search box of YouTube and let that guide you for ideas. I do this all the time. So you're going to take your top keyword. So Michael, what would be your top keyword for your channel? Would it be prison, going to prison? Yeah. Okay, perfect. So you would pre-sentencing investigation report is already so niche down. You could try it, but you might not get that much. So you might say sentencing or prison sentencing, and then you put A and see what auto populates right there. See what ideas you can get. So for me, it's prison wife A. I get prison wife advice, prison wife after visit vlog. These are videos that people have already made. So now I could say, 
oh, cool. Okay, I can make a video and I can title it Prison Wife Advice. And I know people are already finding videos and watching those. Prison Wife Inside and Out, I know that that is a woman's channel. But if I really wanted to compete with her, I can make a video called Prison Wife Inside and Out and do something unique as far as, you know, this is how I feel on the inside. This is what I look like on the outside. And just get really creative. Prison wife after prison, that's another great one. And then you're just gonna go through the alphabet, prison wife B and see what pops up, prison wife C and see what pops up. And then you're just gonna write these all down in a list, the ones that you like, the ones that pop up for you and you never thought about, things like that, so, so helpful. The other way that you can find ideas for videos to make is find YouTubers that are already in your niche. We call them your competitors. But they're also kind of your friends because you're helping to build each other up. You want to search their most popular videos and then recreate them, but you want to recreate them better. So you want better content, watch that video, see what they did, and see how you can, in your content, make yours better. You definitely want a better thumbnail, which is that opening picture that you see on the video. And then also, make your video slightly longer or slightly shorter, depending on if theirs is too long and rambly or too short. Okay, one of the things that Ro told me that I found to be really helpful in this course, in this last lesson, is the importance of developing a link that will encourage people to subscribe just if they can click the link. So I've created that link based on what she taught, and here's the link right now. So if I grab that link, copy, and she gave you the, the formula for doing it, and you will see it in the download bar, okay, of how to do it. Now I can open up an incognito window. So I'm going to open up a window that I've never opened before, and you will see what happens if I send this link out to somebody else, what they get. So if I send that link out to somebody else that doesn't if know me, facing they, a government become, investigation, they get this opportunity to confirm that require a channel subscription. So that's going to that's going to be a real great tool to help build for prison. subscribers. I'm sorry visit. that I've got that video going in the background, but I wanted to show you how I implemented immediately some of the great teaching that we just learned. I have been taking notes as well. And some of the other things that she recommended that we do when building a YouTube channel is to do some research before filming videos. And I want you to see that has not been a strategy of mine. My strategy is really just to get in front of the camera and start talking about something that I want to promote or I want to talk about or I want to teach about. But there's a science to this, and the science that she recommended is that before you ever make a video, you go and do the research. And so one of the tools that I have for doing that kind of research is called TubeBuddy, and you see it right here. There's a free version. I have a paid version. I probably pay $100 a year for this per version. But if you're going to invest in YouTube and follow the best practices that Ro just suggested, I highly recommend that you take a look at YouTube at, at TubeBuddies. And what they offer you is these tools that will help you implement some of the strategies that she suggested. For example, she was talking a lot about researching what are people looking for before you make the videos. If you look at my video channel, for example, right? I'm going to I'm going to try to exit out of this here and go back to my channel. Okay? I'm going to go back to my channel. And God, why, why can't I get this out? I don't know how to X out of this. Um, okay, so there I'm out of it now. I'm going to go to my channel. And if, if, if I go to my channel, you can look at my videos. They don't really get a tremendous amount of, of traction. If I look at the most popular videos, they're going to be interviews that I did with like this guy here who ha has a television special about him and I interviewed him. And so that's gotten a quarter million views. This guy here is on Netflix, has a show on him, a couple of shows on him. Um, he's a famous guy and that got, I, I did a series of videos with him. This is a big speech I gave at, at the University of California at Berkeley. Um, interviews that I do with federal judges, that, that's gotten some. But for the most part, other than these top ones here where I've gotten a quarter million views here, 30,000, 30,000, 25,000, right? You start scrolling down here and they're not getting a lot. These are like a couple of thousand views, 
Okay, scroll down a little farther and you're going to see dropping down to a thousand views. Scroll down a little farther and now, now they're all under a thousand. And that's why my total history only shows that I have received um, 482,000 views out of 585 videos. So I've averaged less than a thousand views per video. And if you take out those very big ones of 250,000 got from one video, I, I have far less. So that is a that is a a flaw on my part. I didn't know how to engineer my way to becoming a more successful YouTube person, which of course you can contrast with um, you know after prison show, right? The, the one that I told you about. Now he said um, that he had a guy helping him right from the start, but as a result well, of him learning Liam. a little bit about, about video beforehand, I don't want to do that. As a result of him learning a little bit about video beforehand, he now has 1,300,000 subscribers. And with 1,300,000 subscribers and a million views a month, you can be sure this guy's making no less, he's bringing in no less than $75,000 a month. That would be the very low end of what he's bringing in. So with $75,000 a month, obviously he has a lot of resources to hire a team and to help him, but he may do it all himself for all I know. I don't have any idea. I've never met the guy. Incredibly impressed with his work ethic, incredibly impressed with the deliberate strategy that he's taken because he's built a media company in less than five years. In less than five years, he went from being, as we remember seeing his initial one, you know, to having working multiple jobs and, uh, 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 um, you know, being stressed out about money and, 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 and living, you know, not very well to where he is right now. And, and you don't really notice that, you know, he's not a, 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 a guy who's showing off his, 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 how successful he is, but I can tell you as a businessman, He's incredibly successful. And that may be a technique well, for him to William. communicate with his audience. You know. Same thing with Wes Watson, right? If we look at him, and I showed you him in the last one as well, here's a guy that in less than, in less than uh, three years, right? He started less than three years, 2017, December of 17. So two and a half years, he built a channel that you can see through analytics is bringing him Two million views a month, okay? Two million views a month. That's a lot of traffic and it's generating for him a tremendous amount of revenues. So you can see when she spoke about branding, they all look the same. You look at the, the titles that he uses. All of that is engineered. I don't know whether he's got a team that's working for him. I don't know whether he's doing it all himself. All I know is he's taken a different approach than I took. And as a result of that, his channel is extremely successful by anybody's metric, okay? By anybody's metric. You may not like his content, that's not really relevant. The market is the one that decides whether someone is successful or not. I could say I'm successful all day long, doesn't matter. It's what does the market say, and you can't fake that. Um, Roe has spoken about algorithms, and that YouTube is a search engine, and a search engine is going to reward what the market wants to deliver, okay? And she gave us some techniques to, to, to go and search for sources. Um, but, but I know that one of the tools that I have to start using is this TubeBuddy source, okay, that gives me an opportunity to look for, to look for um, videos that I want to make. So if I, uh, one of the things she mentioned was core links, for example, which is the, the email system that works inside of prisons. And according to this technique here, I am in a very good position to be making videos on Corelix because I make a lot of videos about prison. So even if you waited, I've got a, an excellent chance of scoring very well for that. Even an unweighted, I've got an outstanding chance of scoring very well. So there's 4.68 million people looking for videos on Corelix every single month. So what is that telling me as, a, as somebody who's building this kind of a channel? I've got to be thinking about, okay, where do I go to find the kinds of videos that are going to talk about Core Links? And she recommended this little tool. Use Core Links right here 
type it in the search engine and see what people are already filming about it and how many views are they getting. Here's Kodak Black. Now, I think that guy's a pretty famous rapper. Ironically, his, his lawyer reached out to me in the last couple of weeks. And I hadn't heard of him before, but, but, but apparently he's got a big following because he put out a YouTube channel on Corelinx and JPay, and it's gotten 10 million views, okay? That's a massive number of views, okay? There's Ro Clausen. She mentioned it. There she is. She's ranking number two, how to email someone in prison, okay? So these are very good techniques for me to think about. I wrote a lot of books using Corelinx. I'm in a very good position to be talking about it. But I can look and say, okay, what are people using in keywords? This guy's Need probably workers got comp a really insurance? high authority channel. He's got 10 million views. Let me take a look at his channel. Okay. Um, I, see it now. I don't want to listen to music. But he's got, yeah, he's got 44 million views in the last month. And he's got 3.4 billion views over the course of his lifetime. So this guy's clearly a big star. He gets 44 million views a month. Um, but he looks like he's an entertainer, a rapper. So, so um, I don't know if he's still making videos because I think this guy's in prison because his lawyer just reached out to me. Um, but he must be a super big star. Um, but out of 274, yeah, these are all these are all rap style videos. But he's a big he's a big star. He's got six million subscribers. Okay, so so definitely somebody to look at. But I'm never gonna rank with somebody like that that has six months. I can't compete against somebody like that. So I have to look back. Well, Need workers' comp insurance? Can I compete against? Who else is in there making things about core links? So she's getting tens of thousands of views on it. Um, uh, there's a lot of people here that are. And that's really interesting to me. So I have some ideas that are popping into my head of what I'm going to do to test these theories, but I'm definitely going to be using um, the, the, the guidance we got from Ro and, that, and, and what she said is, before I make a video, make sure I do my research and find out what customers are looking for. And that's something that you can be doing right now where you are. You could be writing scripts, you could be writing names, you could be writing ideas. All of these things are going to help you if you want to come home and use this tool to help you build your career. And I strongly suggest that you do. The, the, the beauty of YouTube and the reason that I thought it would be important to create a video like this is because if you get out of jail or prison, it's real reality that the job market is very tough. And so you've got to anticipate that and you got to say, what can I do to overcome it and start building a platform? YouTube is a great platform, but it takes a lot of work. You may not, it may not look like it takes a lot of work, but this video here is, I, I don't even know how long it's going to be by the time I finish it, but I'm going to guess it's going to be about 25 or 30 minutes. I probably have six hours in just doing the editing um, and everything else just to create this one single video, which is not a super high production value. I'm just sitting here as a talking head inside uh, looking at the screen, but I am making cuts and edits and I'm writing and there's a lot of work. And that's something I would have liked to have been doing while I was in prison. Um, it's something that I think you could be doing and that's why I'm taking the time to create this course for you. And so we've got several courses remaining and I hope that uh, this improves your fluency on how to use this to advance your life as well as your career when you get home. And again, I want to remind you that the more skills you develop as a communicator, the better off you're going to be if you want to present yourself in video. And I think that you could see, just as I just showed you, if you can create links that you can send them out with your resume and a prospective employer could click on the link and learn a little bit about who you are, it's going to help you overcome some of the stigma that really complicates reentry for a lot of people. That's my take on it anyway, and I look forward to bringing you another course tomorrow. And I also want to thank Ro Clausen for giving me this uh, guidance that I can use to help more people prepare for success.